Breaking tonight, Islamist terrorist Ali Habi Ali will spend his life behind bars after being found guilty of murdering Tory MP Sir David Ames at his constituency surgery in October last year after a frenzied stabbing because the South End West member had voted in favour of bombing ISIS in Syria in 2015. Ali is facing a full life tariff when he is sentenced at the Old Bailey on Wednesday. But will today's verdict reignite a much needed conversation? about the serious and homegrown threat of Islamic extremism. This is what I had to say back in November about the mainstream media's refusal to ask the tough questions on the danger terrorists like Ali pose. We saw after the shocking terror attack that killed the MP David Ames last month that the media and the political establishment would rather talk about anything else than ask the hard questions about the homegrown threat of Islamic extremism. So we saw endless discussions about the online safety bill, general civility in society and the way we treat our MPs, all of which were completely irrelevant. These ISIS-inspired terrorists are the sorts of monsters who targeted Manchester children attending an Ariana Grande concert. They have no humanity and we must not rest while they continue to operate on our shores. The media must ask the difficult questions. How are they being radicalised? Who is behind the radicalisation? Why isn't the PREVENT programme working? Does it need more funding? Spiked chief political writer Brendan O'Neill also wants Ali's active politically motivated terror to spark a dialogue. Brendan wrote, this was a political assassination carried out by a religious extremist. Will this act of terror stir up much discussion? Will the fact that you can be murdered in 21st century Britain for supporting Israel and opposing Islamic extremism become a talking point? I have my doubts. Ali Habi Ali will rot in jail, but our Islamist denialism looks set to stag on. And Brendan, the rest of the media don't want to talk about it, do they? But I think it's time we got real about the serious threat posed to us by Islamist terrorists. Absolutely, I agree. And I really agree with the comments you made in that uh, clip that you just showed from a few months ago. When you think back to the discussion in October last year, it, it's completely surreal to think about what politicians were focusing on at that moment. They were talking about mean tweets, the culture of being anonymous online, uh, horrible comments that are made to politicians and other public figures, as if the what happened to David Amos was just some form of trolling, as if he was just being, you know, someone was being horrible to him. In fact, what we now know for sure is that this was a political assassination motivated by Islamist extremism, motivated by religious extremism. And we need to get to grips with that. And, and what Ali said in his justification for his heinous crime, he said that there were two reasons why he thought Ames was a good target. The first is because he voted to bomb ISIS in Syria. And the second is because he was a member of the conservative Friends of Israel group. So this was a political assassination of someone for opposing ISIS and for supporting Israel. We need to have a serious discussion about that, how that can happen in 21st century Britain. Well, indeed. But the problem is, Brendan, the way this works, and we've both been through a number of these terror attacks now, is that initially the mainstream media say, oh, we can't talk about this because we should be celebrating the life of the person that was killed. Then the terrorist is charged so they can hide behind the legal process for not having the discussion. And now, all of these months later, they know that the public appetite has moved on. So what it means is yeah. there is just a conspiracy of silence. Absolutely right. And we have the same routine every time there's a terrorist attack. You know, you people might change their social media page for a while. They might put up some flowers, put up a sad image or say, you know, express regret for what's happened. We lay some flowers. We might sing a song, Imagine by John Lennon or Don't Look Back in Anger by Oasis. Those are the kinds of things we do. And then we move on. And what the political class and the media class tend to say is that anyone who focuses too much on these kinds of attacks 
could be driven by Islamophobia. They might unwittingly stir up hatred for Muslims. They use these forms of moral blackmail to try to silence political discussion and try to, to try to silence people's feelings of anger about these kinds of mass attacks that have taken place in recent years. So I don't like the, the culture of conformism and the culture of censorship that surrounds these kinds of attacks. It's all a form of Islamist denialism where we can't get to grips with the fact that this scourge really does exist. I completely agree, Brendan, because they don't have the same sort of problem having the discussions if it's around trolling online or if it's around uh, white extremism or if it's around racism. It's only when it's Islamist extremism that the media seems to want to find excuses not to talk about it. Yeah, and you only have to compare the horrific murder of Joe Cox by a far-right terrorist with the killing of David Ames by an Islamist terrorist. And the difference in the approach, the difference in the discussion, uh, people still talk about the Joe Cox horror, as, as, and they're right to. It was a terrible event. You know, there, people still uh, make commentary on, on what that told us about the, the problem of the far right, the problem of right-wing extremism. But with the Ames killing, it's been subdued and it's been washed away from the public consciousness much quicker, I think, than the Joe Cox killing. So the comparison between those two things, I think, is really, really striking. And I think that one of the problems is there is this idea that Muslims can't cope with a serious discussion about Islamist extremism. They might feel offended. They might feel bullied. But the truth is that the majority of Muslims in this country are also opposed to Islamist extremism. They don't want these extremists in their communities. And a majority of them, I expect, would welcome an honest, open discussion about this political problem. So I don't like this paternalistic attitude of wanting to protect Muslims from offense and this censorious approach to a real problem of extremism. We really need to tackle this head on. Indeed, because until we start having the conversation, Brendan, this will keep on happening. These homegrown terrorists will keep on killing and it has to be pushed up the news agenda. And that means the mainstream media having brave conversations like the one that we've just had. So I really appreciate you coming on, Brendan O'Neill, to deal with this horrible breaking news today. And I hope he rots for the rest of his life behind bars.